Last me to Cyphos. It's time for the Mad Merlin's Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Journey. Episode 22, Part 2. Rules, Painting and Playthrough. Hello and welcome back to episode 22 of the Mad Merlin's Warhammer Imperium Journey. So, we're on to the painting portion of our episode. And as you can see, I've got my Skitari um, Alpha primed and in a set of sub-assemblies. So we've got his legs with his backpack, blue tack to the top, and we have his main torso. This is to make painting all the different areas a lot easier. I've already primed him with the lead belcher spray from Citadel. But first things first, we are going to give him a once over with lead belcher from the pot. So we'll give our paint a good shake. Have some on our palette and fill it down with just a ever so slightly small touch of water. And onto the model here, we are basically just going to cover all the areas that will be silver. So we're going to look at mostly his armor, his bionics, and his weapons. But well, once you've got a nice solid coat, we're ready to move on to the next step. There, with our silver down and dried, we're ready to move on to the next step. And to stick with the metals, we're going to skip straight to Rune Lord Brass, which we're going to use to add details to the armor trim, belt buckles, and parts of the weapons. So this paint is already fairly thin, so we're not going to water it down, but we will get a small bit on our palette. And we'll start with the legs, so we're going to look at areas such as this little sensor, sensor ball down here. Probably burning sacred machine oils. I'll paint his knee pads as well. And on our Alpha, we're going to be picking out parts on the weapon, such as power housing there, this piece up here, and then of course we're going to do the trim, so make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush, and use the tip or the side, and gently run along the edges of his armour. make any mistakes just touch up with lead belcher before we move on to our next stage there you can see what we're trying to aim for okay with our rune lord brass details picked out we're ready to move on to our next color and we've changed our water and cleaned our palette because now we're going to move to our matte colors our first one is Macrag Blue, and this is only a small bit of detail, which is the glow on his Arc Maul. And on his Phosphor Pistol as well, I forgot that bit. So, just want a small bit of blue, a little bit of water. There, perfect. So, onto the arc more. We're going to be painting 
these ribbed details in between. Each of the nodes on his maul. Like so. Again, if you make any mistakes, just touch up with lead belcher afterwards. And on the gun, we're looking at painting The thin bit at the back of the pistol, like so. Just take your time, keep a nice thin point on your brush. And you can't go wrong. If you do make any mistakes, just touch up with your base colors. And don't forget to change your water. Well, I think we've managed it without needing to make any touch ups. So our next paint will be corn red. This is to paint all of his robes. So mainly he's overcoat. So we'll just get a couple of dollops on the palette. Touch of water. And if we hold it by the weapons, we should be able to get to all the areas of the cloak. So, as this is going on top of silver, we will probably need a good two coats to get a solid coverage. On the larger areas, there's no worry to be neat, but make sure you thin the tip of your brush and get in between all the cables. And when we're getting near any armor panels as well, also take care. Do this on both the inside and the outside of the cloak. Until you have a nice smooth colour. Okay, with the corn red down on the coat, we have an almost finished Skatari. But our next stage is to give it an overall wash. And as you can see, I've reassembled the model using a bit of blue tack to hold it in place. And now we're going to give him a nice wash with good old Agrax Earthshade. I'll just get a couple of dollops on my palette. And... You can apply, apply this all over everything we've just painted. Just try to avoid the uh, blue if possible, but if not, just touch it back up with my crag blue from the pot later on. So as I said, we're not looking to be too neat with this wash. We're just going to get it over the brass, the metal and the red. Okay, with our Agrax Earthshade dry, we can now see 
shaded our model down, giving him a nice aged, worn and oiled look. So we can leave him attached to the legs of our next part, but we will need to remove his backpack. As the next part is to return to corn red, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. So I'll get a little bit extra corn red on my parrot. Like so. Now, if you read the instruction book, instructions in the issue, it will accidentally tell you to use three parts paint to one part water. What it does require you to do is use one part paint to three parts water so that we get a really nice thin down corn red. So it should look like that and when we paint it in other areas it will look like that fairly thin. So what we're looking to do is to redefine some of the flat larger areas. But at the same time, leave our recesses nice and shaded. So if we look at the front of the cloak here, we got a very noticeable uh, crease there. So what we want to do is make sure our paintbrush isn't loaded up too much. Starting on the edge of the cloak, just bring our paint down to the bottom. And leaving that recess, we'll paint this flat area, again, bringing it down all the way to the bottom of the cloak. You may need to join the two areas together where the recess disappears, like so. Then just go around the model, reapplying this until you've got a nice crimson red to your cloak. There, with our corn red uh, relayed and drying we've made the coat look a little bit more vibrant. If you've accidentally done a little too much in the recesses like I have, just go back with a touch of Agrax Earthshade and a thin brush and reaffirm the um, recessed base colour. So, our next colour, we can disassemble our model, leave the coat to finish drawing. As we can focus on the legs, and the colour we're going to need here for the fatigues is Abaddon Black. We'll prepare this in our usual way. With a touch of water, helping to thin the paint down. And then we can bring it on to our fatigues. So you want to try and avoid all the areas we've already done with metal. So all these armor plates. And the pipes. I want to leave those metal. Just work your way around, blocking in the Abaddon Black. Other areas that we'll need to paint Abaddon Black include uh, Alpha's 
Um, pommel and the haft of his arc wall. Try to avoid the small spikes, but don't worry if you get them get them covered over. We can return with a dot of lead belcher later on. And finally, we want to look for any smooth cables. There's this one here hanging down at his side. I'm going to cover, paint these black. And also the cult Mechanica symbol on his chest. Just give that an all over coat of black for the moment. And then we'll just return to that with our next detail. Okay, with our Abaddon Black down, we're almost finished. So, our next colour, to finish off the Cog Mechanicus on his chest, is Korax White. So, What we're looking to do here, what we're going to be doing is painting the right half of the cog with Corax White. Paint's drying out. Like that, and then we want to paint the left hand side of the skull. So hold your breath if you need to. Yeah. Perfect, I think. And we have just one more colour to apply which is Scream Pink, and we'll be applying that to all our Purity Seal Waxes. So on our Alpha, we've got one on his shoulder there, and one on his hip. So, with all our paints applied, we're ready to see how these guys do on the tabletop, and we're going to learn the final rule for the phases of the game, which is the morale phase. So, I will see you on the battlefield. So before we go into our playthrough, we do have a new data sheet, which is for the Skatari Rangers. So the unit will be locked to a specific equipment. So you do have the arc rifle, galvanic rifle as standard, phosphor blast pistol, plasma caliber, the transuranic arquebus, and the arc mole for the alpha. We have all the special rules at the bottom. Doctrina imperatives will be detailed on its own separate sheet. And then on the back, we have a tutorial about the Arquebus, how it ignores Lookout Sir, and a reminder about plasma weapons and their effects. So, on we go. 
Okay, our battlefield is set up. So we have 10 Necron Warriors over here. And we've got our 10 Skatari Rangers down there. It's a simple mission to eliminate the opponents as quickly as possible. So, halt the invaders. The Necron Legions have broken through Cyphos's defenses and landed on the surface. Skatari Rangers are the first to react and must hold the line. Mission Briefings A single unit of Skatari Rangers confronts the scattered Necron invaders. They must destroy the first wave of Necrons and give their allies time to join the battle. The Necrons hope to establish a foothold on the moon before the Imperium can respond. Necron Warriors Necrons Advance to victory. The Necron Warriors must destroy the Skatari Rangers swiftly in order to establish a beachhead for their invading allies. Admit the Skatari Rangers hold the line. The Skatari Rangers must obliterate the Necron Warriors and ensure the Adeptus Mechanicus' lines are not breached by the first wave of Necrons. So there we have our briefings. So all over the page we have a reference for the morale phase, but as we're going to go through the playthrough, we will discuss that as we go. So the Let's get my data sheet out a second. So the Admech get first turn and the first thing they can do before anybody gets a move, a turn is at the start of the first battle round, models in this unit can move up to three inches. They cannot move their end their move within nine inches of enemy models. So to get a bit closer to our enemies, our rangers, We'll sneak ahead. And three, whoop, get some there. So now their move phase. Skatari Rangers have a movement of six. They are only humans, but they have Enhanced Bionics, so they get to move a little bit quicker. So we'll move as far forward as we possibly can. Someone's lost their backpack. Let's move that off to the side. So next it's our shoot phase. As all our models are equipped with near enough heavy weapons, We are going to have to suffer a minus one for moving as we are infantry. So we've got quite a few different weapons to fire first. We're out of range for our sergeant's pistol, which is only 12 inches. So yes. So we'll start with our arc rifle, which is a rapid fire one. So if we are within 15 inches, yeah, we are. So we'll get two shots because of a half range. So needing uh, freeze at minus one. So five and a six down to a four and a five. So that's still two hits. Arc rifle is strength six. Toughness four. Freeze. Oh, that arced over their head. <laughs> okay. 
Next, we'll fire our galvanic rifles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and they are heavy too. So that gives us 12 shots. So threes with minus one. Leaving all of that as hits. And we are strength four, tough four, fours. Mmm, nice lot of wounds. So six saves on the Necrons, and it has a minus one, so five up saves. Two saved, and four go down. We still ain't finished. We have a um, Arquivus, which is a single shot. Five down for four, that still counts. And strength seven, tough four, not double, so freeze. Wounded. With a minus two, so four, five down to six. Nope, another warrior is down. And now we have our Plasma Caliber, which is an Assault 2, and we'll just Standard Shot. And... We didn't advance, so there's no minuses to our hit rolls, so everything hits. Strength 7, freeze. Two more wounds at minus 3, so... Two straight dead Necrons. So, at the end of our shooting phase, the Necrons reanimation protocols should kick in. So yes, our reanimation protocols kick in. We've lost seven models, so we roll seven dice. And we re-roll ones. Only two get back. So, as long as they're within range, uh, coherency even, not range. So, at the end of the turn, we need to take a morale test. So, a morale test, we roll a single dice, one. Add the number of destroyed models, which is five. If it exceeds our leadership, we have failed. But with Necrons having a leadership of 10, it's hard for them to fail. So we've passed. On to the Necrons first turn. So we'll move forward five. That's six, five, five. So now it's time for our Necrons to shoot. So we've got one with a Gauze Reaper who will be in range for rapid fire. No, Flayer, sorry, for rapid fire. So we get two shots, needing threes. Oh, nothing. Then we've got one, two, three, four with Reapers. So, freeze. And strength five, tough three, freeze. Three wounds with minus two. So, Askatari have a four up save down to a six up save. One makes it, but two have failed. So, we now. Remove two models. At the end of the Necron's turn, because we won't um, do combat this turn, we skip straight to the leadership phase, or morale phase. So, Askatari have a leadership seven for their alpha, so five plus two is just enough for them to pass. So on to the 
Admex next turn. We'll move six, keeping two away. So here I have to move five. Five, five. All right, we'll shoot with our galvanic rifles. So one, two, three, four of those left, giving us eight shots. Fours, because it's minus one. And freeze. Three wounds with a minus one. So five up saves. <laughs> Necrons make it. Okay, we are in range for the Arc Rifles Rapid Fire, so two shots, one hit, freeze, one wound, minus two, so six, nope, one dead Necron. Next we have our Plasma Caliber, two shots, freeze. Oop, and freeze. There we go. Minus three, so no save for our warriors. And we got a phosphor pistol, which is pistol D3. So two shots. Freeze. And strength five, so freeze. And one wound with a minus one, five up. Nope, another dead Necron. Okay, end of the shoot phase. Reanimation protocols will kick in. So we lost three. And two get back. Keeping them away. On to the charge phase then. We're gonna charge in. 10. That's only more than enough to get everybody in. So our Alpha now gets the chance to wallop the Necrons. So he gets two attacks and with his Arc Maul, if it is attacking a vehicle, we have damage two and we wound automatically. So it's a four plus to hit, one hit, and strength plus three, so strength six, tough four, freeze. Wounded, minus two, six up save, makes it. Then we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Skatari. With a single attack each, hitting on fours. Wounding on fives. One wound, four up save. No. So the neck ones have failed. So end of the phase, we get a single reanimation roll. Nope. And now we take the leisure test. So uh, single d6 plus one, you can't really fail, no. But as we have a model that is out of coherency, we now have to remove him as we can't have a single, uh, can't have two coherent units from a single unit, which means Lee Skatari will then get a chance to pile in for the next round. So the Necron strike back, two attacks, freeze, no, didn't get the wound. So Necron's turn, Skatari will fight first, so two attacks for our champion, doesn't do anything, seven, Oops. Skatari. Needing fours and needing fives. 
One wound, four up save, made. Two Necrons strike back. One hit, freeze. One wound, four up save, made it. Just. So this could go on for some time, so we'll call it quits there. Right, there we have our playthrough. So the only thing we didn't get to cover was combat attrition. But combat attrition is a fairly, stat, fairly easy process. If you fail a morale test, um, you now roll dice equal to the remaining models in the unit. Any ones, that model, one model will flee. Other than that, the units acted as they would have done. Most of them had pretty good leadership. They had boosters in the form of the Alpha having a high leadership. And a um, Boxcaster guy there. Oh, if he's Data Tether, not Data Tether. Yes, Data Tether. So he's got a direct link to the Tech Priest in charge. So, that was just a quick little tutorial about the morale phase. And as this video is already pretty long, let's get on to see what's in our next Imperium. So, quite an exciting issue for Necron players. Next, in issue 23, we get our Canoptic Spider. This is quite a nice model, one of my favourites of the Necron range. And it's a nice update to the classic Necron Tomb Spider, which used to be pretty heavy metal because he was literally made of metal. So we get rules for our spider as well as our scarabs. And in issue 24, we get rack our flesh to paint in our purity seals and we get non oil so we can shade all our metals and our greys. So this will be mainly used on the space marines in this issue. Anything to be used on the necrons will be saved for a later issue. So there we have Issue 22 of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium. I'll start filming issue 23, if not this week, definitely next week. But all that's left for me to do is thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to help the channel out, there is, of course, my affiliate link for Curtain Games, as well as my Buy Me a Coffee channel, which will be getting regular updates every Monday, Wednesday, and hopefully Friday. I'll be sharing my um, schedules for filming and uploading, and as well as news from my paint desk. So, I will see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.